Good to see you again. The factory sent over the parts that were looking good on the rig. They're being fitted as we speak. Have a look at the report. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Saber career mode for part number 16. As you heard right there from Chris, looks like we've managed to get our upgrade that's failed in Malaysia but is now fitted onto the car for this particular Grand Prix in uh, Japan. So I'm hoping now that means we're going to actually going to be level with McLaren in terms of the uh, R&D performance. But as you can see also, we've we managed to get ourselves a nice little sponsor bonus. So that will be uh, beneficial and potentially we might be able to put in one more upgrade before the end of the, uh, the season. But we'll have, let's have a quick look and see how the thing is. But it looks like McLaren are still in front of us for some reason. Let's have a quick look. No. Oh, no, uh, McLa uh, McLaren got a performance boost due to a Codemasters patch. That means we're going to be miles behind these guys. And we have to work, all, do all that work again to try and close that gap up to the uh, the midfield. Because now McLaren seems to have been given that performance boost based off what happened in real life towards the end of the season, of the 2017 season, sorry. And that's the reason why they are a lot closer to the likes of Toro Rosso, uh, Haas and w Renault, etc. All, all those teams that are in that uh, midfield scrap. But unfortunately, that's left us right at the bottom and it looks like we're going to be uh, struggling for this particular Grand Prix due to the fact that our performance is now right dead last and we're no not really uh, that close enough to McLaren to mount any sort of challenge but let's see what we can do though we might be able to uh, get some uh, more upgrades on the car in the near future in fact we're actually going to go into it right now and actually I decided to aim for a potential power upgrade mainly because of the fact that McLaren's Honda power that has been improved based off that chart that you can see on the right hand side of the corner but well, what we're going to do first though is we're going to in invest in more sh chassis factory efficiency and buy another one of those to make sure that now the uh, all the uh, chassis weight components are now worth or oh, uh, cost 30 percent less than what they originally did at the start so all the minor upgrades are now going to cost only 700 and my aim for this is to ensure that we'll be able to then purchase three potential upgrades in this uh, section and close that gap right up to the rest of the field at, at the end of the season and then such that for the start of next season we'll be in a great shape but anyways we need some more resource points to achieve that so let's get into practice for the japanese grand prix we're back at one of the oldest and one of the best racing tracks on the formula one calendar welcome to suzuka where the practice session is just about to start One of the more intimidating corners on any Formula One track is the legendary 130R. Whilst unusual, the name actually comes from the original design of the corner, a 130 meter radius turn starting just past the track crossover. Over the years, due to several severe accidents, the corner's been redesigned to create a straighter entry and creating what is now a double apex left-handed corner. Despite the changes, this is still one of the most exhilarating corners that drivers in F1 have to take. It's not normally considered an overtaking spot, but this is the scene of one of Fernando Alonso's most famous manoeuvres, when in 2005 he passed Michael Schumacher's Ferrari around the outside. All right, here we are in practice one, starting off with the track climatization on the medium tyres. That's the hardest tyre compound available for this particular race so I couldn't remember exactly what the uh, tyre compounds were available for this so that was kind of a bit of a surprise but uh, it kind of makes sense if you think about it when the uh, circuit is relatively long more of a longer circuit on the calendar with it being 53 laps in real life but as you can see we kind of made a little mess of that uh, hairpin but thankfully we've already managed to get the uh, maximum available resource points from that particular, from that particular practice program which is absolutely fantastic we need to try and get as many purple um, practice programs as we possibly can to try and Reduce that gap that suddenly McLaren have have managed to uh, generate due to the uh, the patch that we uh, that was uh, oh, that was released when this uh, I recorded this. But anyways, we're now into the uh, the tire wear program, and as you can see, we've managed to get ourselves inside that uh, purple zone. And therefore, means we get a second uh, objective or purple objective as the Ferrari goes straight past us. And I thought I'd just let them through before the uh, start of turn one. It's very tight into that corner, and there's always you can have a few nasty accidents with the uh, AI if you not, aren't too uh, careful. As we, anyways, we're now into the fuel saving, going around the very famous spoon curve, one of my favourite corners on the actual uh, calendar as well overall, as, as well as the circuit. This is actually one of my uh, favourite circuits on the calendar. It's very tricky and very technical to uh, get right. It's all that, all the very aerodynamically uh, tricky first section, and they've all, of course got the very much high-speed uh, 
sections are slow, a bit more slower speed in the second section with that hairpin. But then you've got the high speed sections as you head up towards 130R and then the final chicane. As Hamilton goes straight past us for the 130R corner, very easy to make a mistake around that sort of area if you have a uh, driver alongside you. But thankfully, Hamilton already overtook us by before then, so uh, that was unfortunate. And then we've got another driver trying to overtake us before uh, 130R in Daniel Ricciardo. I kind of let him through once again, but we're going to use the, uh, the toe of the Red Bull to ensure that we have a little bit more uh, straight line speed and ensure that we're going to get a, a decent lap time through the uh, section. We've got to make sure we don't run into the back of the Red Bull, though. That would be a complete disaster, and uh, we would kind of cost ourselves quite a bit of time on that final lap if we, uh, of the uh, race strategy. But we managed to get the maximum available resource points from that. We then moved on into qualifying. It was very tricky to get this absolutely uh, spot on around the circuit. On the uh, super soft tires, going through those two technical curves, really tricky to get right as well as this happen that we're going around now it's a very good overtaking spot right there but uh, you can very easily lose quite a bit of time if you don't get that uh, exit perfect but anyways we're coming through the uh to our final chicane as you can see we've already managed to get the green objective but unfortunately for us we're unable to actually get the uh achieve the purple target so that means we only managed to get four out of five purples but uh, i'm hoping that the, that uh, we can use these resource points in the near future and try and get that uh, engine upgrade in preparation for either the US Grand Prix or potentially for Mexico due to the fact that it's got some very long straights and we want to be a little bit faster down in the inner straight line such that we're not complete sitting ducks like uh, say a McLaren Honda w was but uh, was pre-patch uh, but anyways grabbing a few more resource points we're currently on 529 so it doesn't look like we'll be able to make any upgrades just yet but uh We'll have to wait and see towards the uh, end of the actual Grand Prix itself before we can actually make a decision on that side of things. But anyways, let's get into qualifying now. Welcome to the only figure of eight track on the F1 calendar. We're here at Suzuka for qualifying today ahead of the Japanese Grand Prix. So then, Ant, it's another Grand Prix weekend, another exciting qualifying session ahead of us. What are you going to be looking out for over the next few minutes? The first question is going to be who can avoid making mistakes. There isn't much margin for error in qualifying, and you have to bear in mind that the track conditions may have changed since practice, particularly as we've had a few support races in the meantime. If the brake bias settings, for example, don't take this into account, it's extremely easy to lock up a front wheel and cause a flat spot. Just like that, your lap's ruined, and you've wasted a set of tyres to boot. All right, here we are in qualifying one, one, ready to start our open lap around this uh, Suzuka circuit. It's a beautiful day for qualifying, but as always, this first lap is mainly just to get something on the board such that we then have a delta in the right-hand side corner. So I'm probably going to make a few mistakes on this particular lap, but it doesn't really matter because we are going to go for a second run on these uh, set of tyres. As you can see, we are currently up on that uh, split time as we head through the uh, hairpin and now heading up towards the spoon curve. Currently sitting in p9 for now but i'm hoping we can get further up the grid than that as we knock the bollard over as we go through the uh, final chicane down to 10th for now but that we may have an opportunity to move up a little bit further up the grid and we do so moving up into seventh place in front of alonso of course it's uh, honda's home race with it being in japan and uh we're able to get in front of them for now but as you can see we're currently sitting on the bubble in 15th place here so i thought let's let's get out there again and get another lap on the board such that we then have no issues with regards to potentially missing out in Q1. Well, let's have a quick look and see if we have enough of a, uh, a window as we come through the final call. We do are, are improving on our lap here, coming through, heading across the start finish line. We do move up into 11th place, and that is going to be enough for us to actually get into the second part of qualifying, just outside the uh, the top 10, which is quite uh, interesting, considering the fact that our the patch update, etc., put us right at the bottom um, of the uh the standings but as you can see bit of a disappointing outcome for uh mclaren Honda. as both drivers end up missing out in the uh, q1 with alonso and van dorn qualifying 16th and 19th respectively also jolian palmer and lance stroll missing out along with their line who is starting from the back of the grid unfortunately we now going to q2 using the same set of tires we put our final uh, lap of q1 on again just trying to get that uh lap time on the board such that we then have a uh, lap time to compare against and then we'll put on a brand new set of super softs towards the end such that uh, regardless of whatever happens it's a one it's one time lap and therefore uh, if we do get into q3 it means those tires will then be used for uh, 
the start of the race, but apparently, according to the weather forecast, we may end up having a, a wet start, so it may not make a difference, actually, as we come across the line to finish to complete our lap. Unfortunately for us, we don't make, manage to make it into the final part of qualifying. We end up uh, qualifying down in 14th place ahead of Kriat, but that's just one of those things, really. I thought I was just really trying to get as high up the grid as possible, but to qualify 14th, I think, is a good uh, starting point. And if it is raining on the, for the race, we, have, we may have an opportunity to score some more points on the board. So without further ado, let's get into the start of the race right now. It's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today, although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. Anthony Davidson could be a wet one today. Great to have you with us. What are your thoughts? It is a touch damp, isn't it? Or as a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these kind of conditions. Standing water, tyre temperature and visibility. And judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tyres kick up. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and starting alongside in P2 is Sebastian Vettel. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Perez, Ocon, Massa, Grosjean, and Nico Hülkenberg, Raikkonen, Sainz, Asalba, and Kvyat, Alonso, Palmer, Stoffel van Dorn, and Pascal Wehrlein. Stroll and Kevin Magnussen rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. All right, here we are on the grid, ready to begin the, the race. As you can see, based off the weather, we're not going to have the uh, most interesting of race strategies on our hands. It looks like it's going to be a one-stop strategy going from intermediate tyres to intermediate tyres as the uh, light rain is expected to, be, to carry on throughout the duration of the race, unless, obviously, we end up getting delayed with a, uh, a safety car or something like that towards the end, and then maybe some more uh, unpredictable weather towards the end, but we'll have to wait and see on that front anyways. We're now on to the formation lap, starting in 13th place, so uh, it's, a, again, a possibility to get back into the uh, points after a good uh, haul of points in Malaysia, but obviously we want to make sure that we don't run into any sort of... Uh, Tricky situations like we did a couple of races ago in, say, Singapore, and also the very narrow uh, entry point into Turn 1, so we've got to be uh, really careful about that. So, without further ado, though, let's get ready to start the Japanese Grand Prix. The rest of the grid is forming up. Be patient and watch for the lights. Lights out and away we go and the initial getaway is fine but that second phase of the start sees us getting swapped a little bit by the Torosso of Kvyat and also Alonso going past us. Palmer taking advantage of us being quite cautious into turn one and then he swipes across us which results in damage to the front right hand side of the front wing which is really unfortunate as we try and force our way around the outside of Palmer on the exit corner unfortunately we get cut out to dry right there. It's going to be a little bit of a struggle now with this damaged front wing especially in these uh, tricky weather conditions. We go and have a look at the replay of the start from the front of the field. Vettel looks like he's managed to retain the lead, but looks like Hamilton's being aggressive and going up the inside of the Ferrari to take the lead away from the uh, Ferrari as we now go back on board to our point of view, just out on the exit of the deck section of the uh, circuit as we now head up towards the heaven, trying to go up the inside and get a little bit of revenge on both Palmer and potentially Alonso, but it seems like Alonso had a little bit more of a better drive on the exit of the corner, on the racing line, and in that newly improved McLaren, he's able to uh, fend us off. And uh, it's only one position gained from that initial uh, poor getaway. Up into P15 for now as we head it, accelerate towards 130R for the first time in this race. As we've got a yellow flag in play, though, which must be some event incident in front. And there's cars that are on the left-hand side of the track in the gravel and grass section there. So uh, we've gained two places right there, right there but we'll have to, wait, we'll have to look and see what actually caused that incident? And that, it would actually involve the Ferrari of Raikkonen and the Haas of Grosjean. You see Raikkonen trying to go up the inside. But there's contact on the exit of the corner. Raikkonen spears off into the barrier and loses his front wing. I think he's able to continue though, but that will be an early trip to the pits. 
for the Iceman and the championship leader. Not very good for his championship chances at this particular Grand Prix. As Grosjean tries to correct the uh, his slide after he was hit by Raikkonen, but unfortunately he ends up in the barrier and breaks his suspension. So he is now out of the race. As Palmer tries to go back up the inside of us into turn one, but we're going to sneak up the inside into uh, turn two right there just to... Uh, Make sure we uh, regain that place. I think Palmer was a little bit too aggressive going into that corner, and that's what that meant that he had the door open in that uh, second part of, of the corner. But as you can see, we are really struggling right now. I've really uh, just had enough of this front wing after only just a, a lap and a third, a third, a lap, one lap and one third of the second lap. I was just struggling to do anything and keep up with the guys in front. So I thought, let's take the hit. Let's go and switch to a two-stop strategy. And let's see if we can get some uh, good laps onto the board. I'm, I'm pretty sure with fresher intermediate tyres, we might be able to uh, come back at some of these uh, drivers a little bit later on in the Grand Prix. We're now coming to replace our front wing. I'm, I'm actually curious to see if we get in front of, stay in front of Raikkonen, because of course he uh, had his pits up on the opening lap. We'll have to wait and see how much time we've overall lost to him on this particular lap. I think he's... Um, going relatively quickly as, as he's in the Ferrari as we now accelerate out of the pit and it looks like we have managed to maintain position ahead of him which is uh, fantastic. I very much doubt we're going to be able to uh, keep that for very long though. We'll just have to wait and see how the uh, next few laps progress but we are in front of him for now. It only takes him just a couple of laps to actually gain and close right up to us. As you can see we're now on to lap four at exiting the spoon curve and Raikkonen is right in our mirrors right now so it's probably going to be a real... Uh, struggle to keep him behind but let's have a look and see we're going defensive into 130 i forcing him to go around the outside i've, I've obviously uh, learned from the fact that Raikkonen um tried to go up the inside of Grosjean and that resulted in a retirement for for uh, one of those drivers but anyways we go a little bit deep though into the uh final chicane which may give Raikkonen an opportunity into uh turn one there's no drs in operation of course because there is no because it is a, a wet track as we now go on board with uh Raikkonen's perspective one of these uh cameras that you see on the uh, F1 circuits in real life. He tries to go around the outside of us into turn one, overcooks it slightly though, and he ends up off the circuit. So that means we've managed to maintain position just for now, at least, but then he's gonna come straight back at us. One lap later in the same spot as the previous lap. Once again, though, we're gonna force him to try and go around the outside of us into 130R. I think he gets a little bit of uh, of his tires on the exit, on the outside of the, uh, the corner, on the outside of the curb right there. So that unfortunately prevents him from uh, Find doing a, a late manu lunging maneuver and going side by side with us at the exit of 130R, then going up the inside into chicane. As we now come through on lap six, again fending him off just about this time. It was very, very close between him, between him for him to uh, finding his way around and trying to go side by side right there. Thankfully, though, it means that we have enough of a gap, I think, as we come across the uh, start finish line to start lap seven. But I'm expecting that Ferrari at any moment to start closing the gap. He's right there in the uh, in our rear camera shots as he tries to go around the outside of us once again but there's contact on the eggs at the start of the corner and we power slide through turn one i have no idea how we managed to hold that through the corner it could have been an absolutely disastrous accident there if we weren't able to hold it as you can see looks like it is right rear hits our front left and we're somehow both lucky to not have a serious accident like we saw earlier on in the race with uh Grosjean. we're now on to Lap seven, We're having another wheel on the curb right there. There's more contact that's in play as on the exit of the corner. We then go into the bus up, the, oh, when I say bus up chicane, the actual chicane, sorry. I don't think it's called the bus up chicane in uh, Japan. But anyways, we come went to the chain. There was even more contact there. I think it's because I accidentally closed the door on a bit on him a bit too soon. And I didn't expect him to be up or inside right there. But anyways, anyways we're still battling as we head up towards the start of lap eight into turn one. Once again, it looks like he might have made the move stick, but unfortunately, no. He's actually gone wide again on that corner. That gives us the space on the inside to take the position and back into uh, turn two. As we now go on board with a replay and see what actually happened. Yes, I did actually accidentally turn into him a bit too soon. And that's resulted in, hit in him, Raikkonen, sorry, Raikkonen hitting the bollards, or oh, both bollards on the exit on the uh, curving right there on the, uh, on the chicane. As we now come up, accelerate towards the uh, first corner once again. He's on the outside giving him as enough, oh, a car whipped own space only. Nothing more, nothing less. That's how it is in the, uh, for hard racing. But anyways, we're able to fend him off. He has a little bit of a tank slapper on the exit as well as we uh, made our way back past. But this time around on lap eight, he has the inside line to 130R. So I'm 
praying for no major contact. There is more contact though, and he forces off the uh, 130 off the uh, exit of 130R, which uh, ironically actually managed to uh, kept us in uh, front of him for now. But anyways, we're going to make sure we don't give him that opportunity off the inside again, as we now force him to go around the outside. He is side by side with us in 130R, but I decide to uh, run him off the track just like he did to us the previous lap. But anyways. Uh, we're now coming through the uh, chicane right now. I think it's uh, that was the last lap, actually, that we end up uh, battling battling with him as he actually came into the pits for a second pit stop. I think he's on a three-stop strategy now that he's uh, had that uh, front wing change at the start of the race. Anyways, we've now had drivers making the pits as we're now back into play with some of the drivers that we were racing a little bit earlier on in the Grand Prix, the likes of Palmer, Alonso, etc. I think all these guys are actually stuck behind our teammate Verlein, who has yet to make a pit stop so far. So I'm hoping he's going to give us a little bit of an opportunity to try and overtake some drivers as we go for a late maneuver up the inside of Palmer into the chicane. This, he actually gives us the space on, you know, up the inside, so I thought, why not give it a go? And we actually make the maneuver stick. We're up into 14th place. For now, I think there's another driver in the pitch. No, there actually isn't. I thought there was a little bit on the uh, mini-map right there. But Palmer's going to try and see if he can force his way back round. There's contact in the corner. And we nearly go into the barrier on the inside of Turn 1. It's a really odd place to crash if that ended up being the case. But to be honest, I don't know exactly what Palmer was doing there. I was in front. I don't know why he's trying to go up the inside of a closing door. I don't know, why the, I don't know whether that was my fault for assuming that he was going to slow down or it's the AI's fault for not slowing down in the first place. But anyways, we've maintained position. We've managed to break the toe of Palmer and we're now in pursuit of our of, of Alonso, who's now trying to go around the outside of our teammate Verline into a turn one and turn two. Verline forced him a little bit off the track right there, but it looks like they're going to go side by side through the uh, Suzuka S section. So it's really going to be back and forth between these two as we come through the corner. But unfortunately, Verline's been hit off by Alonso. I don't know. I don't know if that was, uh, I'm pretty sure that was like accidental though, based due to the fact that it was Alonso's right rear with uh, Verline's left front in that particular part of the circuit. Alonso was three quarters of a car length, in, three quarters of a car in front, so I would say it was more of an accidental uh, incident right there. But it's a bit of a shame that uh, Verline got taken out like that. But anyways, we do gain a free position as a result of that, and we decide. Because it, we are, the tyres are relatively warm, we've been on these for 12 laps. Let's get these, uh, get out on a brand new set of intermediates and try and do an undercut Alonso. I'm praying that Alonso actually has a second pit stop to do a bit later on in this Grand Prix. So let's see how this uh, pit stop goes. It should be a lot faster than what we had a little bit earlier on in the Grand Prix when we had to have that uh, front wing change. But let's have a look and, look and see what sort of time we get. Verline is also coming in, which is a little bit of a bottleneck but hopefully there's enough of a gap between myself and our teammate to uh prevent him from losing too much time to uh the fact that there was a bit of a stack taking place anyways we're now rejoining the track in 18th place obviously Verline is the uh last uh running driver because of course he's behind us and he's currently in the pits right now but anyways we're now uh cutting to lap number 16 we're just trying to set as many personal best sectors as possible to try and get in front of Alonso via the undercut as we now come through the uh, chicane to uh, end lap number 16. We're pr it's, I think it's pretty close to when Alonso actually makes a pit stop. This is we've got on board oh, a, re oh, a camera feed of Alonso making his final pit stop. The interesting thing as well is that the weather is starting to change a little bit towards the end of the race. So could we see the introduction of a dry tyre here as we uh, see Alonso actually goes on the intermediate. So it, it, the track isn't dry enough for slicks which is which is a good sign for us it means that we're not going to get completely screwed over by the weather as we now come through the uh the final corner to start lap 19 alonso is coming out of the pits right about now that was just alonso's feed right now he should appear on the right hand side of the track there he is right there it could be really close between us as he tries to uh oh that's really close i think i went a little bit too fast through that corner and i had to take avoiding action as a result but then he alonso does leave us the space on the outside of turn two, and we were therefore able to take the inside for the start of the Suzuka S's, which is uh, absolutely crucial. We were able to get, gain that position right there. We're currently sat in 17. Let's go on board with a replay and see what actually happened here. Lonzo accelerating out the pits there. Gives us a little bit of space after we end up going a bit off the track. But there, it, there he is. There's the space that he's allowed us to get, get into, and we were able to get up the inside. And he was very uh, generous, I would say, about that. He wasn't fighting too hard 
as he knew, I think he probably was losing that battle anyways. That was a little bit of revenge for Verline that uh, we got on him. Anyways, we're now on to the start of lap 20. We're currently sat in 12th place after uh, two pits. So unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to make up any more ground on the uh, rest of the field. The track drying out and also the fact that uh, we're on much more... We have a much more worn intermediate compared to the uh, rest of the field due to, the fact, uh, due to our early pit stop, uh, pit stop with the front wing. But that's one of those things really we just have to deal with. Anyways, we're now coming on to start lap 21. There's a virtual safety car that's been deployed. That will give us a little bit of a time to just, just to nurse these tyres for a little bit and hopefully uh, we can nurse or get to the end of the race and hopefully Alonso doesn't have a potential run on us to get back at us a bit later on towards the end as we now come on board and see what actually caused the uh, virtual safety car is Raikkonen again going up the inside of a car and he gets completely spun out after uh, trying to overtake a car on the, uh, up the inside of 130 again and this time the victim in question is Sofal van Dorm. he goes out in the same way as Roman Grosjean and he is out of the race anyways now it's not just Raikkonen that's uh, struggling with this corner Vettel tries to go up the inside of Verstappen I think and he gets spun out as well and that results in the Ferrari losing his front wing so that's uh, going to be a little bit of a disaster for Vettel's championship chances right here as Ricardo comes through the uh, corner behind us and he ends up losing his front wing due to the uh, Vettel, Vettel spinning off the track right there so a uh, bit of a disappointment this is a bit of a frustration for Ricardo. he was really the innocent victim as Vettel was spinning right in front of him he couldn't really do too much about it but unfortunately for those two they're going to have to make some extra pit stops as we now come towards the end of the virtual safety car at the on towards the middle of lap number 21 so we're really just trying to fend, the main aim is now to try and fend off a lot and hopefully these tires don't complete, completely go off the cliff with the fact that these the, the uh, track is drying and the weather has most definitely improved but i don't think with the with the amount of time that we've got left or number of laps that we've got left in the race it is worth actually switching to the dry tyres. So we're really just going to have to stick it out on these uh, worn intermediates. As Lonzo has got uh, four laps off. His tyres are four laps younger than ours. So I'm expecting some form of challenge in that newly improved McLaren as we come through the uh, spoon section. We've got to make sure we don't make any sort of mistakes. As we, as I, just as I say that, we go wide on the second part of spoon. And Lonzo might have a fancy a sniff up the inside there. But we're thankfully able to fend him off. For now but he's going to be in the slipstream of us with that newly improved Honda engine but it looks like we're going to be able to uh, fend him off through 130 there's no uh, issues with us going side by side like we had with uh, Raikkonen a little bit earlier on in the Grand Prix so it was really that was a big opportunity potentially for Alonso to make his way past we're now on to uh, the towards the end of mid, uh, end of the first sector of lap 26 setting a personal best through the uh, first sector but unfortunately we make a mistake in the second deck and get a wheel on the gravel and that's going to allow Alonso to potentially go around the, up the inside and potentially have to go around the outside of us into the hairpin. There's a little bit of contact, though, as we head through that uh, little kink before the uh, hairpin. We were able to fend him off just for now as Alonso tries to do the switchback. But thankfully, we were able to uh, fend him off right about right there. As we go on board with Alonso and show how much more speed he had off this corner, trying to go up the inside of us and take advantage of the mistake of Alonso, the wise of the old fox, trying to do so but we were a little bit wise to it and had the inside line Lonzo then tries to do the switch back as I mentioned before but he doesn't have the speed off the corner to uh, pull it off we're able to fend them off as we now come through the uh, final chicane a bit of a disappointing race for us as considering the uh, weather conditions and how well we've done in the past at uh, wet races but anyway if we're going to come home in 12th place we achieved the objective that the uh, team drive, expected And here are our podium drivers today after that excellent race. They've excelled here as they so often do, and it's a well-deserved victory. Mercedes there are on top today. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader, and their advantage at the top has been reduced. Moving on to the driver of the day then. Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? Probably Carlos Sainz. You know, strong pace, good work with the strategy, just a very complete drive, I think. 
On to the constructors then. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. There'll be plenty more twists and turns to come this season. I hope you can join us at the next race to see just who will come out on top. So confirmation of the results of the Japanese Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton winning his third race of the year. The third Mercedes won two of the year with Bottas in second. Verstappen third. A good result for Force India with fourth and fifth. Perez in front of Ocon. Vettel in sixth. Hulkenberg in seventh. Sainz in eighth. Massa in ninth. And Dan and Ricciardo recovering to take the final in points in tenth despite his little uh, front winger uh, front winger. Uh, issues with the uh, contact with Vettel. As you can see, two drivers ended up retiring and Raikkonen finishing all the way down in 17th place, which means his championship lead has been cut once again with his, set, oh, his third zero points in uh, five Grand Prix. Throughout the third race with zero points in five Grand Prix has resulted in his championship lead cut down to just 15 points between himself and his teammate. And Hamilton's now only 19 points back and he's still in the championship after uh, winning today. As you can see, also uh, Hulkenberg and Ocon, and also Sainz moving up as well, respectively, with their good uh, results from this uh, Grand Prix. As you can see, this is what the Constructors' Championship is looking like right now. As you can see, uh, still sitting in sixth place for now. Mercedes have cut the gap a little bit to Ferrari, but uh, no real change in uh, terms of team positions. It was really getting a little bit close between the for the uh, battle for fifth, though, with uh, Sainz and also Hulkenberg picking up points for Toro Rosso and Renault respectively. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all for the next race which will be start the start of a little bit of a, a three-part America tour where we start off in the United States for the uh, US Grand Prix in Austin, Texas. So until then, see you later.